I'm Dr. Marta Perez and welcome to 5-Minute Birth Prep on Friday. I'm so glad to have you here for episode 3, What is a Due Date? In this episode, we'll cover three things. One, what is a due date? Two, how long is pregnancy really? And number three, will I have my baby on my due date? Okay, part one, what is a due date? Okay, so as a doctor, I actually see a lot of confusion over what is a due date. So for those who may not know, it actually sounds like the day your baby will arrive. And is that what it is? Not really. The scientific term we use is EDC, which means estimated date of confinement. Sounds pretty old fashioned, right? And it is because back before we had a lot of modern technology, we dated pregnancies from something we could identify on a calendar. Due date was about the average length of pregnancy after that. It's just an estimation and everyone is different. Kind of like there's an average height for human beings, but tons of diversity in actual heights of each human being. The average doesn't mean everyone's the same size, it's just the middle. So the EDC is calculated in two ways. One is from the actual first day of the last menstrual period. So if you really think about it, you realize you're not pregnant for the first two weeks of pregnancy and you don't get a positive pregnancy test until at least week four at the earliest of pregnancy. And then the EDC or the due date is week 40. So you get a positive pregnancy test at about week four. So 40 minus four equals 36. So that's where we kind of get like the nine months of pregnancy colloquial term, um, how long pregnancy lasts. But pregnancy as doctors, we actually talk about in weeks. For most women, they'll ovulate in the second week of their cycle. And so this is how we contribute to the estimation. But I said most women, not everyone ovulates at the same time. And some people get pregnant via fertility mechanism. So we may not be counting from the same time. So that's why we also use ultrasound now. So dating a pregnancy by measuring the size of the fetus in the first trimester between about six and 12 weeks is more um, accurate than using just the first day of the period alone. So we may start out with a due date based on the first day of your period, but then once a first trimester ultrasound is done, it depends on how much they're different by. There's a, a little bit of error with ultrasound, so it's like a few day buffer on either side. And if it's outside of the window from the period, we go with the ultrasound. And if it's within the window, we say, oh, they make sense, and we go with the period. Part two, how long is pregnancy really? So I wanted to go over a few terms that we commonly use to discuss lengths of pregnancy, especially at the end. So you may hear premature babies or premature birth. The term we actually prefer rather than premature is preterm. So preterm is defined as a pregnancy that's less than 37 weeks. So that can be very early, 25 weeks, or later at 36 weeks and five days. But those are considered preterm pregnant. The next setting is that after 37 weeks, you are term. So let's break down kind of the, but there's different categories within term. So from 37 weeks and zero days until 38 weeks and six days is called early term. So you're term pregnant, but it's early in that, in that period. The next period is from 39 weeks and zero days to 40 weeks and six days, and that is called full term. This is like the sweet spot in pregnancy where when birth occurs, there's the least number of complications for both mother and baby. The next period is called late term. Late term is only one week and it's 41 weeks and zero days to 41 weeks and six days. And then finally, the latest pregnancy term is post term, which is 42 weeks and beyond. Your question may be why have so many terms for things that are just a few days, weeks, two weeks apart? And the answer is that the complications are different for different times in pregnancy around that term area. So I mentioned that full term is the sweet spot. Before that, when birth occurs, there's more likely to be fetal complications from not being um, fully mature. But after that, there's more likely to be maternal and fetal complications from the length of pregnancy. And those start to go up past full term. I'll go into this more in a future episode. But summarize to say that late term pregnancies that go beyond the due date, there's increasing risk of both complications for fetuses and for pregnant patients, including increasing risks of preeclampsia, of hemorrhage at the time of birth, C-section, as well as fetal risks of meconium aspiration, intrauterine death, and neonatal death, all stuff we don't really want. So that's why we monitor pregnancies that go beyond 41 weeks. Finally, part three, 
will I have my baby on my due date? Okay, so I hear this all the time. And the answer is probably not. So there's a bunch of different reasons why women have their babies on different days. I did look up a study that was done in 2013. It was a very large study with tens of thousands of women in Australia, and it included any woman who went into spontaneous labor. And it found that only 5% of women went into labor on their due dates. So it's very unlikely that your due date is the day you'll have your baby. So it's a nice kind of like estimation on when you can expect around the time to have your baby, but it certainly is not an exact date and don't hang your hat on that one for the calendar. And stay tuned for further episodes about induction of labor, why that might be necessary medically or why you might want that. And go back to episode one to read about what is labor and what happens during labor. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Marta Perez. If you're interested in other things about labor and the end of pregnancy, be sure to check out my other episodes and subscribe. And if you're interested in postpartum, birth control, periods, and lots of other information, check out my Instagram at Dr. Marta Perez where I discuss all those things. Thanks so much, y'all.